Hello YouTube, this is Frono. I'm in a new survival world, punching trees. And that doesn't mean that I'm unhappy with my server, the hemisphere server. I will stay there, of course, and I have big plans there. But I thought with 121 around, I should do a little mini-series. And the aim is basically to get good in technical Minecraft in a new world. And get good in this case means I will give myself 24 hours to create a new world and I want to set myself up for technical Minecraft. So here you see a laundry list of stuff that I want to achieve in this 24 hours. I certainly want to build an iron farm, I want to have a villager breeder and a trading hall and also a slime farm. I want to have an elytra and then we'll see what we can achieve. So here are the rules for this 24 hour challenge. I will use a few data packs, I will list them in the description. Nothing special, all from vanilla tweaks, like fast leaf decay. I will also use my usual client side mods, for example Xero's map. And the map is not random. I have actually selected a map where I have fairly nearby a village and a swamp and a nice large plains biome where I can build an industrial district. So let's grab a boat and go there, where I'll tell you the rest of the rules. Now, I have a data pack that will show me how long I'm here in this world, which is also from Vanilla Tweaks. So you see here on the right hand side the play minutes. We will stop in this world if we reach 24 hours. And otherwise, I will use the usual client side mods that I also use on the Hemisphere server. With one exception, they are all client side, so you can use them with any Vanilla server. But I will use accurate placement which is a carpet feature, which allows to build especially redstone contraptions much faster. And I have an inventory mod that allows me to move a lot of items, to move matching items and stuff like that, which is inventory profiles next. I will use Tweakeroo, Mini Hut, and Light Medica. And if you think Light Medica is a bit of cheating, yes it is, but I can't really talk and think at the same time. So <laughs> I will have to plan some farms that I built in Light Medica ahead so that I can tell you about why I built them and how I built them. If I would try to do this otherwise, I would probably build a lot of rubbish that doesn't work. I will also not count AFK time and technically I'm allowed to spawn in carpet bots in survival. So I can, for example, build an iron farm, set a bot there for 24 hours and then return to this world. Otherwise the series will be a bit more raw than the stuff that I usually do. But it will also give me time to talk about stuff, why I do it the way I do them. Oh, sugar cane. But let's loot our first village, get some stone tools. So I will take a few beds. I will try to sleep so that the villagers don't die, hopefully. But we'll start right off the bat with a villager breeder, so we need a few beds for that. And of course I want to design where the villagers can sustain themselves. So therefore it's really good that we have potatoes here. Grab a bit of cobble to make stone tools. Now the builds will not be pretty, but we won't cheese it. That means we won't take the cheapest and fastest design to build cobblestone. just to get something done. So for example, the iron farm that I plan will have four villager we'll pot and create quite a lot of iron so that I won't have to build any iron farm ever again. And we have some wheat, which is good. Here we also have a few buildings where I might just trap some villagers. And the important thing is at the start, we want to grab a few villagers, but we don't want to grab farmers because farmers might have wheat in their inventory. And we want to do a self-sustaining villager breeder. So what we really need are some potatoes or carrots. So we have a couple of villagers sleeping here. Let's just trap them so they are safe from mobs. And that's a really valuable find. We have a church here. And the church allows us to do a cleric villager which will sell us redstone. So this is huge for a fast start because we don't need to get blaze rods. So let's create a couple of boats. And I think I will set up shop maybe here 
just a hundred blocks away, which will make sure that my villagers don't claim any workstations in the city. So I'll just park my villagers here while I start building. I will also set up a mini field here to start a few potatoes. We didn't get a ton from the village, but we'll be fine. And we'll start working on our villager breeder. And we can just build it here. The villagers will pathfind to a workstation that is within 48 blocks. So we will just give them a few composters here. So let's get cracking. I want the villager breeder to work while I dig for my first materials. So right at the start we need a bit of iron and a bit of gold and of course a nether portal. And I have anti enderman grief on this world so I can just use dirt to build which I will do for the villager breeder at least. And all we really need for our villager breeder are a few building blocks, a couple of beds and a bit of dirt. And the idea of the villager breeder is that we just have a little platform something say 9x9 nine nine. and what we have is water in the middle so we have here a spot with water and then we'll have our farmland here in a square so let's count this one two three four so these will be the borders and we built a too high wall around that so that the villagers cannot escape okay now we need two composters because we have we have two villagers that need workstations, so let's just put one composter here, the other composter here in the other corner. And now we need an exit, so the exit will be here. And now we just need a few trapdoors, so let's say this is our setup, then the villagers will think they can go over this trapdoor. And instead they will fall into a water stream that will be down here. And we go four blocks, I think, or maybe five. So the babies will end up here. And what we do now is sort out the adults. So we just put a sign here and make sure they can't get out. And we start a new water stream here. So what happens is the babies will end up here. We have a new water stream starting here on top. And only the adults will have their head in the water stream, so they will start to swim up, so that they don't drown. And then we will here have a little pickup station. So this is the way it looks. And now of course we need to build up all these walls too high. And what we also need to do is to have some light sources and to block the access to the composters. So basically, if we just put two trapdoors here, then the villagers will accept this as a workstation, but will unable to go there, so they can't compost their potatoes. So if we want, we can make this a potato farm later on. But let's just build up the walls. Okay, of course we need some light, both to have the crops grow and to make the and to keep the villagers safe. And now we we'll convert this into farmland. Now make sure you only use potatoes or carrots because villagers can eat these directly. There we go. And of course we need to close up the workstation from outside so the villagers can't get there. So let's just do this. The villagers might actually go on this wall here, in which case we can push them. That would be fine. And boy, I almost forgot the all important trapdoor here. Because villag villagers are higher than the player, so they are exactly two blocks high. So if we put a trapdoor here, then the villagers won't be able to go through, but I think they can go through. This is the all important part. So, let's see what happens. If we break this boat here. So hopefully this villager will be a good villager, yes. And go straight to his workstation. Okay. And now let's, okay, stupid guy. Let's break the workstation. Okay, let's replace the workstation.
There we go, villagers in. Of course, now the workstation is one block too low, but that will be fine. And now let's try the same maneuver with the other villager. Now the other guy didn't take the workstation, we'll see what happens. I might have to break it a few couple of times. At the very least there's nothing in the vicinity that he could claim. So the next step is to plant a few potatoes in there. And if you already have a few mature ones, you can harvest them. Now unfortunately in this stage manual harvesting is a lot faster to grow your first few potatoes. So what I will do here is I will start my first mine and go mining a bit in the facility and when I come back these potatoes should be grown I can plant them in there and the villagers will start breeding and try to get let's say a bit of iron a bit of redstone for my first redstone contraptions and some lava for another portal I will also try to get some sheep in just a mini pen because we will need more beds and we will need more wool so I figure I'll see you in about an hour when I'm done here. Okay, over an hour later, the potatoes are planted. So we're kind of waiting for these villagers to produce enough potatoes to create children. I grabbed a few sheep and a couple of chickens. And in my mining, I was rather lucky. I got a ton of iron, also got a few diamonds died a few times because I don't have any armor. Even got a bit of dripstone, so I could set up a little bit of lava production here for my furnaces, which will allow me to smelt stone, which is really nice. Make sure that no mob can get inside to the villagers here, so otherwise you will have dead villagers really soon. So I hope this is secure now, we'll see. So this was my first goal, to have a villager breeder. The next goal will be to set up a little cobble farm and an iron farm. Now a cobble generator shouldn't be a problem. I, luckily I killed a few creepers and found some gunpowder in a chest, in a mineshaft. So that's also where all these rails are from. I'm a little bit short on gold, which is usual, but this should be enough to transport our villagers to the iron farm. So for now I will use an AFK player. And... Let the villager breeder produce a bit, check back in a couple of hours and, and see how see. many villagers we got. Okay, let's check back. Our AFK player caught a creeper it seems. And our village breeder has worked perfectly. So we've got five villagers, we need a few more. But we can put our time to good use. Since we need building blocks, let's just do a small cobble generator. And for this we'll need a bit of redstone and one piece of TNT. Fortunately we have a bit of gunpowder and let's melt up a bit of stone to create a few repeaters. And we also need to go to the nether and get a bit of nether quartz. Of course the nether is a dangerous place if you don't have any armor. So I kept this short, just grabbed a bit of quartz and a bit of gold. We can always come back later for more resources. Anyway. That maybe also got Unfortunately, we are fresh out of redstone dust, so I need a few more pistons for the cobble generator, and I will also need a few more repeaters for the iron farm. So there's only one way to do this. Let's get mining, and hope we quickly find a bit of redstone. But I think that's it for the first episode. We're good, we'll let the villager breeder run a bit more with an AFK player that I will this time move a bit further away so that we don't have any more creepers in our sheep farm. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you want to see more content like this and see you in the next one where we'll build an iron farm. Bye bye!